Thanks for joining us on Key Factors, presented by the theraceguide.com.au. Stu Rich and Mike Wood here to take you through the big card at Royal Randwick this weekend. We're going to be looking at the quaddy legs, plenty of best bets coming your way, a lot of value in the show as well, and of course the $100 hot seat later in the show. Welcome in our Chief Analyst, Mike Wood. Mate, two of the world's great mountains got conquered last <laughs> week, the Everest and of course the Kosciuszko. What a day that was out there, over 40,000 at Royal Randwick. I tell you what, there were some scenes. Yeah, congratulations to everyone involved. What a fantastic day it was. Yeah. Great to be with you on a Thursday night. It was great to be with you last Saturday as well, Stu. What yeah, was a good. massive lead up to that race day. And what about the drama on race day as well? The heavens opened. Yeah. There was a vicious on-pace bias and the Snowdens were rubbing their hands with glee. Redsdale got the job done. We got the conditions wrong, so we lost our money. True. But congratulations to everyone who got a winner on Saturday. Yeah, look, plenty of great stories, of course, Redsdale. And uh, how about the Kosciuszko, Mike? The William Farrah Hotel, they obviously picked up the slot. They had awesome pluck in the race. That run third. They managed to multi that into Red Zill. Good luck to the connections down there. Look, they so did, many yeah. great stories. I reckon they're going to be blowing all that on the Caulfield Cup this weekend. <laughs> Speaking of Caulfield Cup, the internationals, I know you love to run your eye over these horses this time of year. Where are we at with those? Yeah, they're pretty good under the Caulfield Cup. I've looked, had sort of one, two or three looks at those yep. horses in the Caulfield Cup, the internationals, and I've absolutely got no idea. I reckon two more nights of hard analysis. Maybe Saturday morning I'll have a bit of an opinion. One thing's for sure, though, Ace High should be wearing the Aussie colours from Australia Day. He should be wearing the Australian silks. Yep. Not too many Australian horses going around on Saturday. No, you look at that field, don't go to the Aussies, but you just wouldn't think this Caulfield Cup field is in Australia, all those internationals. You wouldn't think it. Look <laughs> at this, the prefixes after their names. There's in New Zealanders, there's yep. Kiwis, there's <laughs> over from Europe as well. And looking forward to the Melbourne Cup, it's going to be the same. Maybe they'll change the rules for next year. We'll see. We want to see more Aussies get a chance on the big race. Well, they're probably going to get a dry track down there. Let's turn our attention back to Sydney, Mike, because it's been wet, wet, wet. We're going to be looking at a wet track, but that's all important for key factors again. Yeah, so important. We got it so wrong last week. We said soft with no bias. It was a heavy track with vicious on-pace bias. Let's have a look at the four key factors and see what we think is going to happen on Saturday. Progression, is your horse improving on Saturday, including scope and stage of preparation? Distance at the stage of prep, is your horse suited to the 12 or 1400 metres? We've only got sprint races during the quality track conditions. Soft to heavy, the forecast is so hard to predict this Saturday again. And position in run, there might be a little bit of off rails by, so maybe that will play a part on Saturday. All right, let's get uh, stuck into the first leg of the quad. Here's the Brian Crowley stakes over the 1200 metres, as you said. And it's a listed race for the three year olds, Mike. $1.7 million horse, a schnitzel horse here, Diplomatico. We saw what he did last start. That was a huge win, winning his maiden at start number two. And now, of course, we've got to get this Roman console form all sorted out because we've got Jonker, Charge, and Legend of Condor. We've got to see where they're at in this stage of preparation. A few forgives potentially. Yeah, some pretty good horses there. And Roosevelt, it was a Massive yeah, win last one. start as well, wasn't it? Absolutely charged to the line on a wet track. So we'll see if we like that Godolphin horse. That stable is absolutely fine. Let's have a look at the first leg of the quaddy. Over 1,200 metres, like we said. Most of these races are over the six furlongs. Listed level, not quite the Group 1, Group 2 racing of last week. Strong tempo, a few going forward. Soft six to heavy nine. We had a shower at about four o'clock today, yeah, or a heavy one. rain. There could be some storms on Saturday, so we just don't know where they're going to hit Sydney. And the bias is hard to predict. The rail's out eight metres. The inside's chopped out a bit. It could be a little bit on pace, and they could be scouting out wide like Osborne Bulls did in the Everest last week. Yeah, it wasn't that good. It looked, there's so many good things tactics. up in the air with all this weather, Mike. Let's have a look at the market now for the first leg of the quaddy at Royal Randwick, and there is one of those great last up winners, Diplomatico, absolutely smashed in the betting as well. $6 went up. I don't know how long for. Into the $3. Roosevelt here, $3.20. These are the two horses coming off big last start wins. Jonker's one of those horses coming out of the Roman Consul. The best of the odds here, $8.50. We've got Ronstar as well there, fresh for Gary Portelli. But Mike, Diplomatico, Roosevelt, these were some serious wins fresh and the punters have them right on the hammer here as favourites. Yeah, unbelievably promising horses on the way up. Three-year-olds with so much more to give. Jonker coming down in grey. We'll have a look at him in a second. But looking from between these two favourites, we're going to have a look at Roosevelt. It was on a wet track, that's why we like him. And maybe he's just a bit more nailed down. He's got a bit more experience than Diplomatico. This is him second up. This is him on a heavy track. This is him peeling to the outside. And it's almost unbelievable what he does next to you. Yeah, absolutely relish the conditions these days, Mike. And all importantly, coming down the outside, could we see this later in the day at Randwick? Absolutely. Such a big profile positive for him. The fact that he can come to the outside, sustain his run. He's big, he's athletic. He should love the Randwick 1200 metres. Is the right type for this race on Saturday for sure. Okay, now one race we've mentioned a couple of times here, the Roman Consul, Mike. We're not looking at the winners here, we're not looking at second or third. It starts with Jonker in fourth position, but you've got to do this a few times, analyse a few of those horses that might have finished back in the pack. Yeah, they went way too hard this day. I think a couple of the on pages had a blinkers for the first.
first time, definitely Al Merton. You can look at him absolutely drop out the back. He can barely yeah. lift his legs up in the dark blue colours. Jonker was three wide, no cover on the pace. And look, he's still there, 150 metres yeah, out. Run. So his run was pretty good, Stu. Yeah, no, I'll back Jonker this day. Nothing wrong with that, Mike. Look, Cesar off and gone there. But like I say, you just, you've got to take a bit of that out of this form, even if they are finishing a long way back. Yeah, three wide, no cover, strong tempo. Maybe you can give him two, three, maybe even four lengths. So obviously a good run. Definitely the third best run in the race. All right, let's have a look at all the form and the key factors. Not Mike, for all the analysis, take it away. Let's light them up. Yeah, Diplomatico won a maiden. Roosevelt didn't. Jonker's flying in better grade. They get the gold bar for form. OK, there's the two. As we get into the key factors, Mike, the first one, as always, is progression. Yeah, looking for upside. Obviously, the two favourites have big upside. They could be anything in their careers. They can both improve on Saturday again. OK, Roosevelt out on top here, Mike, as we hit distance at stage of prep, the 1,200. Yeah, strong tempo really suits Diplomatico. Strong tempo, 1,200 metres really suits Roosevelt. The two favourites suit it again. And there goes Roosevelt, out by a couple of lengths. Mike, track conditions, we're in the wet range. Yeah, we almost need a red bar to put Diplomatico <laughs> back because we don't know okay. how he's going to go. He's a yep. stronger type. You look at the confirmation of Roosevelt, you look at his wet track form, he should absolutely lap it up again. OK, so a big question mark on the favourite there, but these three favourites are streeting in front. Mike, position in run, Saturday. Yeah, speed map was a look at all these on papers, uh, on paces, Ron Star, F Troop, the tenor, I think Manza Musa can go forward if he wants to as well. Jonker goes forward as well. Diplomatico and Roosevelt just piping, smoking their pipe just behind them. They'll be hard to beat on Saturday. I'll tell you who has gone forward. That's Roosevelt there, Mike, ahead of Diplomatico. Jonker's right there, and that was a long way back to the fourth position there. So let's have a look. Time for a bet here, Mike. A bit of love for the favourites. Which way are we going to go? Roosevelt streeting ahead there. But, Mike, these three horses, is there a bit of love for a trifecta here? Absolutely. Definitely trifecta betters for sure. Open the shoulders on this one. We've got a big gap <laughs> to four. Obviously, there's some horses with upside as well, but the strong tempo and up in grade is going to make it so hard for them. So definitely between these three, we're going for Roosevelt. Definitely each way or definitely the win bet as well. He's great odds. He could firm on Saturday in the wet track. And Jonker, he's an each way play for sure. All right, nice one. So one of the favourites to kick things off there, Roosevelt value in Jonker. Now we're running into the Navision, Mike. It's the second leg of the quaddy. It's over 1,200 metres again, this time for the Mayors over Group 3. And a little bit of a last chance saloon for a few of these Mayors to get down to Melbourne. One horse that's done a bit of travelling, though, is Eckstein. She comes back from Melbourne after a win. And I'll tell you what, that win... She won that after not having a win since May 2017, Mike. So maybe just getting things into gear for the car. Are you sure she won? I had to check the form <laughs> two or three times. And not only did she win, she absolutely it smashed them, didn't she, over yeah. 1,400 metres. But she only pulled away over the last 100 metres. So maybe it's a question back in distance. Let's have a look at the second leg of the quaddy. Another 1,200 metre race this time for the Mayors. Group three level, slightly higher grade. Not as much tempo this time, though. Fair to steady only. We talked about the wet conditions. And we talked about needing horses that can sustain their run out wide as well. well. Let's have a look at the market now for the second leg of the quaddy at Royal Randwick this weekend. And, well, Mike, they came for a few in the first. And I'll tell you what, they've come for one here. Pecans, $8.50 went up about this horse into $4.60 on Thursday. Eckstein out from $4.60 to $5.50. Dyslexic there, $6.50. Resin, we know this horse can also run in the mud. And a few of these just rounding out under $10. Egyptian symbol and test the world. But they have jumped out of trees to back pecans, Mike. This horse is going well. Yeah, going well. We didn't choose the replays for pecans. Obviously, she loves a wet track. She's drawn the inside, though. Will the inside be the place to be on Saturday? Yeah, we've got to respect the Joe Pride stable when the Absolutely. money goes on. Let's have a look at resin. That's the replay we have chosen, the first one anyway. Stu just mentioned she absolutely loves a wet track. She was good first up. This is second up. The money poured in for her this day as the rain poured down. And once again, she was super impressive for the Godolphin Stables, Stu. Yeah, really good. I know we're on a, the week before, the start before this as well, Mike, but just pushing out of the way there and just runs away with this. This was impressive. It was impressive. We took the 26 bucks first up. We didn't take the $2.60 second up, but we absolutely should have taken it. She flies home. She's got massive surge. I think she's two from two at the distance, 1,200 metres. Yep. So stepping up in distance on Saturday is perfect for her for sure. All right, big win there. Now, Eckstein, Mike, yes, it did win in Queensland in 2017, so <laughs> let's go and have a look at this race, because all importantly, a few others lining up here, Egyptian Symbol and Soul for Song. You've got to go back to replays like this just to see how far these horses have come. You found this replay, Stu, and this is a cracking replay. Obviously, it's the Eagle Farm track, so there's a big asterisk next to it <laughs> saying anything could happen on Saturday, but there's three horses that back up again. It's a wet track again. Eckstein, is, she's got mixed wet track form, but she was strong to the line here. Egyptian Symbol, she seems to be out of form lately, but the one 
one to really look at is Sol for Song, who's better at the weights on Saturday, and she was on the back up this day as well, and she was pretty good in third there, Stu. She was. You said you've already had an early bet on her, Mike, but look, a nice replay to have a look <laughs> at there. Give it away too early. <laughs> Let's get into all the analysis now. Form and key factors light them up. Yeah, Form, Eckstein, she won so well at the 1,400 metres last start, she had to get the gold bar for Form. Absolutely. Form there for Eckstein. Now, key factors time, Mike, progression. Yeah, end of last prep. Dyslexic was poor, but she can definitely improve fresh. Resin's definitely got upside. Only a few starts for her. Egyptian symbol can bounce back. Epidemic, good fresh too. Okay, so it's just X down out in front, but these are the mares, as we know, always close, distance to stage of prep. Yeah, we mentioned resin getting up to 1,200 metres now seems ideal for her. Okay, and track conditions, who loves the slop? Yeah, pecans, that's why the money's coming. Epidemic, she'll like it better than Caulfield, we think. Okay, so we've got three here again, Mike, same as the first leg. Now, what about position in run? Yeah, just in case they're coming mid off the rails and the rain's coming as well and you need those horses that can sustain their run, they're the four that we like if those conditions prevail on Saturday. Okay, so late runs there for Eckstein. Resin as well as we know loves the wet mock. A few horses here we've highlighted already. I reckon there's one at odds here that you like. Let's have a look at the market maybe now. Two. <laughs> and maybe two. Eckstein might. A lot of love for her. I think she's going to run a great race on Saturday. Resin we know as we've said already got a bit of your money. Now pecans. 460. Why does all this money come? Yeah well she's obviously a fantastic horse. The inside biases or the outside biases are the worry for me in barrier one. So I'm not taking 460 on a Thursday night first up. There's four or five in the mix there. There's going to be a wet track on Saturday. It's mares. You know it's going to be a close yeah, finish. absolutely. She hasn't won since 2016, but she's fourth up on Saturday. She's drawn nicely. She likes the wet. And have a look at that replay from last week. It was fine. Sold for song each way all day. And Perizada, her form's fine this preparation as well. All right, so a bit of value there for the second leg of the Quaddy at Royal Ramwick this weekend. Stick around after the break and we'll look at legs three and four from Ramwick. Welcome back to Key Factors, presented by the theraceguide.com.au. We're up to the third leg of the quad and is the Club New South Wales handicap over the 1,200 metres. This one's for the boys, Mike. And I reckon Team Hawks would be really happy with the, with the way a pair of those came back first up. Talking about first hand and crafty cop. And how about that ride on Maximus last start? Tommy Berry up the rail. He draws the pole this weekend, but will that be the place to be? Yeah, will it be the pole on Saturday if there's an off rails bias? Obviously, inside run the last two starts. <laughs> What's going to happen on Saturday? And he's so short in the markets without much wet form. Yeah. Very interesting favourite. Maybe we'll, we'll be laying him later on. Let's have a look at the way the third leg of the quaddie sets up. Another 1,200 metre race. We're out of black type now. Benchmark 94 for the second last race of the day. We've got a strong tempo again. Wet conditions again. And watch out for them scouting out wide. James Cummings' tactics come down the outside rail. Yeah, it worked for Osborne Bulls. Let's see if it'll work again on Saturday. Let's have a look at the market now for the third leg of the quaddie. And that last start winner, and a good last start winner it was, Maximus, has had a good support. $4.20 into $3.10. Marsupial here, second up for the boys in blue at $4.60. First hand, as I said, for Team Hawks and Crafty Cop there, six fifty seven dollars Both looking to go one better second up. And New Universe, another interesting fresh runner here, Mike, $7. They round out those under 10 but the money's come for Maximus, and we know why we'll see it here. Yeah, let's have a look at the second up. The win, obviously, it was good first up, one second up. Very different position he runs this day, isn't it? Maximus inside, box seed, Noble Joey rolls off. He gets the inside run. Crafty Cop, first up, three wide, no cover the whole way in pink. And he was pretty good as well, Stu. Yeah, I like the run of a few of these. And we saw Noble Joey last week, so the form stacked up a little bit. Wasn't too far off him late in the day there. But Maximus up the rail. Great ride, Tommy Berry. Yeah, great ride, which makes him maybe a lay on Saturday. He's not going to get this many favours. And, yeah, Crafty Cop second up onto a wet track. He'll roll forward and be very hard to beat. All right, another horse that might be hard to beat is first hand. This is a really good fresh run, Mike, so we've got to have a look at it. Can't miss him in the orange. Got back this day, but like the way he finished off. Yeah, this is an amazing replay to watch. We backed in this day and two excess on the outside had a massive turn of foot. But first hand had too much surge. He's an interesting horse first down. He's taken a while for the Hawks to stable to train him well and get him to settle. He's been learning all the time. He loves soft tracks. He loves Ranwick and he finds the line so well. Off a strong tempo on Saturday, he might just do this against you. How did he win that? Absolutely lifted late. I loved it. I don't think he knows what he's doing out there half the time. <laughs> but he always finds a line, that horse. Well, let's see if he can do that again on Saturday. Key factors time, Mike. Light him up with the gold bars. Yeah, Maximus had the favours, but he's still going well. Gold bar for form for him. OK, just for the favourite there, now we get into the analysis progression. Yeah, Marsupial was a bit plain last start, but he can definitely improve. First hand has a better second up record. Passage of time, 
could do something fresh. OK, we've got a lot around the mark here, Mike. Distance is stage of prep. Yeah, big, big kicker for first town. We've given it a length. We could give it more. 1,000 metres, I think, on a dry track, up to 1,200 metres strong tempo wet track. Much better for the hawk source. OK, first hand levelling up here. Track conditions, who likes the mud? Yeah, once again, first hand loves it. And the stable mate, Crafty Colt, we just mentioned him too. He's had yep. a couple of big wins on the soft. OK, so the two Hawks runners getting a bit of love here in key factors. Position in run. Yeah, hard to predict this one. First hand's maybe drawn a little bit inside, but he could get to the outside. New universe, midfield to back off a strong tempo, storming down the outside. He rarely wins but he maps well. All right, look, the race is over here, Mike. We've got first hand just here based on the key factors. Looks as though it's a race where we can play a little bit of value. I've heard you say you might be laying the favourite. Let's have a look now as we have a look for a bet in the third leg of the quaddy. And Well, there is first hand there, Mike. $6.50 out on top. Is that enough for a bet? Yeah, definitely. Maximus is in the mix, but he's too short. Marsupial, I want to see him again. Look, top striker's on a bad bet each way. Yep. Definitely a place, but he's going much better than he's, well, the odds suggest... But this is first hand's race. Loves it second up. Loves the soft Ramwick track. Yep. We think he's going to storm home. We think he's going to win. We think he's an each way special. All right, there it is. Each way special. I'm on already for him <laughs> nice as well. Nice and easy in the third leg there. Let's wrap it up now. It's the Gem Computer Systems Handicap over the 1,400 metres. Benchmark 88 to finish the day, Mike. And i tell you what, this partnership, Kieran Maher and David Eustace, they are loving coming to Sydney. They've had a winner over the last three weeks. They got right or wrong to try and continue that trend this weekend. And I'll tell you what, first emergency it was, but Mahalunga now gets a start and the money's come. Yeah, promising horse. Watch him in the market. But talking about the other horse you were talking about, right or wrong, he's one of the most consistent animals <laughs> going around. You'll be raising your beer to him in the last if you back him each way. He's such a reliable beast. Let's have a look at the last leg of the quarter. Once again, a sprint race over slightly further, 1,400 metres, benchmark 88. A fair tempo this time and watch out for the horses and the jockeys spreading right across the track in race nine. Yeah, I reckon they'll be there by about the time they get to this. Let's have a look at the market now for race nine. The get out stakes at Royal Ramwick and don't give a damn. $4.20. Interesting to see if it gets into that heavy range. They may not run, but it's favourite for the moment. Off a good run in the Kosciuszko. Mahalunga, like I said, gets a start. $4.40. Right or wrong. So consistent, as you said. $5. Kanachi 7. Bogus there at 8. But, Mike, if, this is a great mark, isn't it? $4.20 for $45. The race is on in the last. Yeah, serious wet trackers too. Seriously good horses. And don't give a damn backing up for the Kosciuszko. I didn't expect that. Yeah. We'll see if he races on Saturday. Let's have a look at the Kosciuszko. A good chance to relive the last, one of the last races on a very, very wet day at Ramwick last Saturday. We were undercover somewhere. We were by the bar somewhere. He was three, four wide, no cover the whole way. He absolutely loomed up. He thought he was going to win. Just the last 100 metres his condition gave out, didn't it, Stu? This horse absolutely loves trying, Mike, and it just does it all the way to the post here on the quick backup. Must be good things. Yeah, seriously good horse. We'll see if he races on Saturday, like we said. There's the all-up horse, awesome pluck. They turned five grand into, what was it? Uh, 150k. 150, that punters club, Stu. So we got nothing, they got <laughs> loads. Yeah, don't give a damn, a serious horse. But there is form around Sun Craze with the other, other favourite as well. So he's no sure thing on Saturday. OK, well, look, one horse you've mentioned, right or wrong, Mike, had a long, long time off. And I'm going to take you back to the 30th of January 2016 here, Mike. So a hell of a long time. Soft six this day. But this shows what this horse can do on a wet track. Yeah, he's been racing over the sprint distances, hasn't he? And this is a soft track, 1,600 metres. I can't believe you found this replay. January 2016. You're kidding, Stu. He came wide on the turn, no cover, sustained a long run and won over the mile. So up to 1,400 metres. Looks like deal for him. Yep. Good find. Good tough horse. He's down late. A long time off. That's the only concern. That's a long here, time ago. <laughs> Let's have a look now. Key factors in the last. Time to light them up. Who we got? Don't give a damn. Obviously was huge last week. Wide no cover. Gets the goal bar. Yeah. Kosciuszko form with the form and progression. Yeah. Hard to say he's going to progress well, after such a tough run seven days ago. Mahalunga obviously can improve. Lightly race. Bo Guest second up can improve. Caravalli. Bad at the end of last prep, can race well fresh. OK, so it's the favourites on top here, Mike, as we get to distance at stage of prep. Yeah, we talked about right or wrong over 1,400 metres looks ideal. Bo Guest as well, he needed further. And Cara Valley, 1,400 metres first up is ideal. OK, right or wrong, levelling up here, Mike, as we hit the wet track. Yeah, track conditions. Kanachi, an unbelievably good run on a dry rose hill, which he absolutely hates last time. Right or wrong, I think it's four starts, three wins and a placing on soft. He should love it too. And is positioning run going to matter this late in the day? Yeah, near a steady tempo, scouting out wide, maybe don't give a damn suited, and Cara Valley is the one that can fly home out wide late on a wet track. OK, will he be flying home late enough for a bet, Mike? It's, it's lit up down the bottom there, definitely some value. Let's have a look now, bring all the ratings in and, of course, the odds for a bet in the last race. And 
Well, you've been pretty keen on right or wrong here, Mike. Don't give it ams right there, though. The fa Look, it's a favourites race here, but you found a bit of value here in Caravali, and I'll tell you what, there's a big line-up behind them as well at odds. Yeah, not proven. Mahalunga in the wet, so 460, we're leaving him out. Right or wrong, Caravali at the odds. They're the two for us. Don't give it ams right in the mix but we'd rather see him in the yard first. Right or wrong, each way, all day. He's one of the most reliable horses yep, in the world. We love those. And he will run well on Saturday. And Caravo, those two trials look really good for the mare, and she can fly home out wide, like we said. OK, so right or wrong for us to give the Eustace and Kieran Ma four winners in Sydney the last few weeks. Now, Mike, quality time. We've got to wrap all this up. Everest Day was tough. Today looks all right, though. I'm liking this. We're going wide in the second leg, but you've got some each-way confidence about a few of these. Well, you're liking this, and you're also helping me out with the selection, <laughs> Stu, because the last few weeks have not been good. Race six, we're leaving out the favourite, John Cone Roosevelt, for us. Race seven, it is a mare's race. It will be a blanket finish, and they're the ones we like. Sold for song for the first win in two years. Get her yeah, home. Wow. First hands, especially each way. But just in case, Crafty Cop on pace, and New Universe from the back. And race nine, the two favourites, plus the absolute mudlark Kanachi, just in case there's torrential rain on Saturday again. And Caravalli flying home out wide. She's good odds as well. All right, there's the look at the quaddy now. $100 hot seat, Mike. I tell you what, last week that 30 each way bet wall of fire <laughs> from Stop last, it. missed by a nose on getting third. Sorry, but that was that was tough to watch. Yeah, it was really tough to watch. I had a big bet on each way, and I've watched that replay 19 times during the week. <laughs> 0 0.02 of a second is the official margin, Stu, which Ouch. I think is probably less than a nose. Let's have a look mm. at the hot seat 100 and see what we do this Saturday, see if we can get some more luck. We're going to Caulfield. We're going to a Caulfield dry track. Thinking Big did so well on a wet track last start. We think he can roll to the front and be so hard to run down. Roosevelt, 40 bucks, 320. He absolutely should eat up the round with 1,200 metres. Jonker, just in case. First hands in each way special. We haven't got enough money to put on him each way, so just a 25 bucks to <laughs> Can't win. Can't have it all, that's right. And we love these big all-ups. Five bucks at 83. That gives us about 400 bucks plus if all three win. Well, wouldn't you be love to be rolling that home as your three-leg multi to end the day? It's going to be a great day out there. The Everest is over, but there's still great racing at Royal Randwick. Of course, it's Caulfield Cup Day as well. That's it from us on Key Factors. We hope you've tipped you into a winner and have a great day at Royal Randwick this weekend. Good punting on Saturday.